Imagine a car which looks a bit like the Tatra 600, a bit like the Mercedes-Benz CLS, and a bit like the Porsche 911 RS Ducktail. Oh, and the car should also be more aerodynamic than a Tesla and offer vaguely similar performance. Enter Hyundai Ioniq 6. The Hyundai Ioniq 6 is another EV from Hyundai after the Ioniq 5, built on the eGMP platform. This is a dedicated EV platform which Hyundai shares with Kia EV6 and EV9. And more electric models are coming from both brands. The Hyundai Ioniq 5 looks like a large hatchback, but Hyundai claims it's a compact SUV. The Ioniq 6, on the other hand, is a D-segment sedan, and this I agree with. Designed primarily for efficiency and aerodynamics, the Ioniq 6 has a drag coefficient of just 0.21, two tenths better than a Tesla Model 3. You can even order digital side mirrors for better aero. We'll talk about their positives and negatives later. In terms of size, the Ioniq 6 falls between the Tesla Model 3 and the Mercedes-Benz EQE. Hyundai designers went to town and created something that, at first glance, looks like nothing from the current model lineup. Only on closer inspection one notices small square elements in the headlights and the tail lamps, which we saw on the Ionic 5. Hyundai calls this parametric design, and also the Tucson features a variation of this motif. Hyundai calls the Ionic 6 an electrified streamliner, and I suppose it best captures the look of the limousine which one could also call a four-door coupe. From the side, it can indeed look like the Mercedes-Benz CLS and one could be excused for mistaking the rear end with a Porsche. The Ioniq 6 is available with either a 53 or a 77.4 kWh traction battery and is either rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. Depending on the configuration, the range can be up to 614 km. This is the most powerful 325 horsepower all-wheel drive version with 20-inch rims. The claimed range is up to 519.19 km. All-wheel drive also means a smaller frunk, just 14.5 liters instead of 45 liters in the rear-wheel drive variant, but it's still enough to store a charging cable and a V2L adapter. The Ioniq 6 has an 11 kilowatt onboard charger. The V12 feature means you can use the car to power external devices and not just via the 230 volt socket under the rear seat, but also using the adapter which you plug into the charging socket. So in the original script I had for this episode, I was supposed to make fun of the V2L and ask, you know, in what circumstances would you use a device like this? So imagine a scenario which is a Typical media journalist YouTuber scenario, you drive an electric car which has V2L capability, you drive to your usual filming location and someone broke a bottle or spilled some other garbage all over the place and it just so happens that you have a vacuum cleaner with you. So what are the odds of all this happening? V2L, or vehicle to load, puts out 3.7 kilowatts and operates between 20 and 100% state of charge of the traction battery. You can of course set a higher limit so that you don't deplete the battery too much and don't worry, V2L has to be activated from the onboard computer so no one will steal energy from your car with their adapter. 
The boot has only 401 liters capacity and the opening is relatively small, as you'd expect from a sedan. There is limited storage under the floor. Uh, there are two levers for folding the back seats, but they only split 40-60 and there is no ski hatch. Also, there are no shopping bag hooks or cargo anchor points. For what it's worth, the boot can be opened and closed using a remote control or this Hyundai Approach thing, or you can close it with a button on the lid. One of them actually locks the entire car, which is also nice. I'm 175 centimeters tall and the driver's seat is set to my driving position. There is plenty of legroom and more headroom than the falling roofline would suggest. But this is at the expense of luggage space. The side seats are heated, there is an air conditioning vent, two USB-C ports as well as a 230 volt outlet. The car may look modern from the outside, but the passengers in the back don't get to experience too many modern amenities. The door pockets are tight, there are some small cubbies around the speakers. Like the outside, also the cockpit looks slightly different than that in the Ionic 5, at least at first glance. Now, in order to make the ambient lighting look more interesting, designers added a 3D texture on the doors, which forced them to move the window switches to the center console, and now the center console is fixed rather than sliding like in the Ionic 5. But under the console, we get a large cubby where you can put, I don't know, a purse or maybe a sling bag. So there's a lot of space down there. The storage compartment under the armrest is deep and there are two additional USB ports in there. The drawer-like glove box seems big, but turns out to be quite shallow. There are cup holders and a wireless charger on the center console not that you really need it, since Android Auto and Apple CarPlay require using a cable. Not very modern. In general, many features from the Ionic 5 are also in the Ionic 6, while the Kia EV9 already has the all-new infotainment system, which will probably make its way to the Ionic 7. The two 12.3-inch displays and their contents look the same as in the Ionic 5, except that in the Ionic 6, you get ESA, Intelligent Speed Assist, and you can't just turn off the audible warning, you have to turn off the traffic sign recognition, like in Honda cars. Kia has solved it better in the EV9. The door pockets are so tight, it's a squeeze for my 0.7 liter water bottle. Above the left knee are buttons for the parking brake, opening of the charging port and the boot, ESP, and to control the mirrors i.e. you control the image from the cameras, not the entire housings. There are these four dots on the steering wheel and they are lit. Four dots are the letter H in the Morse code. Now the dots briefly change color as you toggle through drive modes. Also, when you put the car in reverse, it lights up. And to be honest, I read about it in the press release and this is only when I noticed. Now, the gear selector is uh, above the right knee, the driver's right knee. And again, Kia has done it better because in a Kia, when you put the car in reverse, the selector vibrates slightly. So you have an additional warning that you have selected reverse gear. I'll start with the digital side mirrors. Don't worry, they are an option independent of any other equipment. I specifically asked for a test car with digital mirrors though, because it's an unusual solution and I think it's worth looking into. Apart from aerodynamic advantages, does this solution have any other positives though? From my perspective, no. It seems that the engineers were aware of the limitations and they tried to get around at least some of them as best as they could. First of all, the depth of field, well, there isn't any. You see a 2D image on the screen, therefore when you turn on the turn signal, two lines appear on the monitor, orange and red. The latter means you're pretty much cutting someone off. Without a turn signal, you don't see these lines. Usually when I start indicating, I have already assessed the situation on the road and I'm ready to make a maneuver. And here, I'm not able to assess the situation before I turn on the turn signal, which can cause other drivers to react abruptly. 
So to get around this problem, on the heads-up display and in the corner of the mirror screen, there is a warning about vehicles close by in the adjacent lanes. It's basically blind spot monitoring, but this time it tells you whether there is a car close by and perhaps you should avoid changing lanes. Third, and there is no getting around this, when I look at the screens, I see less outside of the vehicle. Usually, looking in the side mirror forces me to turn my head slightly and then I can see more than what's just in the mirror thanks to peripheral vision. Hyundai claims the camera shows a wider angle than a traditional side mirror, but I prefer to double check what's behind the B pillar. While it's possible to get used to looking at the screens, in my opinion, it's learning a bad habit. Digital mirrors are also challenging when parking. Now you have to assess the car's width looking at the screens, even though you can see a different perspective outside. Reversing into a driveway at night is a nightmare, pun intended, especially when you can barely see anything on the screens. And sometimes the lenses fog up and it takes a dozen minutes or so for the condensation to clear. No wonder digital side mirrors haven't hit mainstream yet, despite several brands experimenting with them. Performance. Hyundai promises a 0 to 100 km per hour time of 5.1 seconds. In both normal and sport mode, I achieved 5.15 seconds. The differences in time from 80 to 120 km per hour and in the quarter mile were negligible. I think that on a warmer day and on summer tires, it is possible to achieve marginally better results. Energy consumption in this spec and trim should be 16.9 kWh per 100 km. I did not manage to go below 20 kWh, but I admit it was still winter when I was filming, albeit not a particularly harsh one, and I did drive the Ionic 6 more enthusiastically than usual. Which doesn't change the fact that instead of the claimed 519.19 kilometers of range, I realistically achieved closer to 350. I drove in normal mode with automatic recuperation enabled. This means the car starts region braking when vehicles in front start slowing down. In order to conserve energy even further, the computer can also disengage front motor when it's not needed. The IONIQ 6 with a 77.4 kWh traction battery has a charging peak of 232 kW, enough to recover up to 351 km of range in 15 minutes, according to Hyundai. Well, certainly not in the winter. Maybe 250 km, which is still a great result, as long as the battery is preconditioned and the charger has sufficiently high output. But these are all things we still have to take into consideration today when planning longer trips in electric cars. The Hyundai Ioniq 6 and the Kia EV9 are the first models in the group to support plug-in charge. On selected charging networks, there is no authorization. You just plug the car in and authorization and payment take place in the cloud, just like Tesla does on superchargers. Headlights. Hyundai boasts Matrix headlights, which may look nice in photos, but are mediocre. This is a problem in all Hyundai and Kia vehicles I have reviewed. There is a reason why they are relatively cheap, taking into account equipment offered on various trims. They used to do that with electric seats, for example. The option was there, so cars shined in group tests, but without memory function, electric seats were pretty much useless. For what it's worth, the Hyundai Ioniq 6 is by far the best handling EV in the group, all manufacturers brag how their EVs handle great because the battery is low and so is the center of gravity. Low. Yada, yada, yada. But it's one thing to have low center of gravity in a crossover and another in a limousine. The Ionic 6 is really low, 11 centimeters lower than the Ionic 5 and 10 centimeters lower than the Kia EV6. It's even one centimeter lower than the Renault Megane E-Tech, which is much narrower and shorter and it doesn't feel as stable around the corners. The suspension dampens the bumps well, visibility is good, the brakes are very efficient. At the same time, for the performance it offers, the Ionic 6 feels very composed and relaxed. It's a comfortable limousine for traveling distances limited 
by the range when driving fast. And speaking of fast driving, it's not particularly noisy inside thanks to excellent aerodynamics. It could be better, but both weight and probably price would increase. The price of the Hyundai Ioniq 6 started at 43,900 euro for the 53 kWh rear-wheel drive base variant, the same as the Ioniq 5. Add 5 grand for the bigger battery or 9 grand for the bigger battery and all-wheel drive. This is the top-spec all-wheel drive model and with options it costs 65,660 euro. The Hyundai Ioniq 6 is, in my opinion, a styling exercise first. A smaller Tesla Model 3 is cheaper and a larger Mercedes-Benz EQE has more customization options, but the Ioniq 6 looks interesting. Do you agree? Or maybe you have different suggestions for a great recent car design? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like my sarcastic, down-to-earth and possibly mildly amusing car reviews, Join me every Friday at 3 p.m. Central European time and don't forget to subscribe and like this video as it helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.